before we get into painting, I have two pieces that I've um, posted videos of recently, and um, it was asked that I would show them when they were dry. So, this is the first piece it dried. This is how it looked at the end of the video. I think maybe it has a few more cells that popped up in this um, portion of it, but overall, it's the same composition. Um, and then this piece, this piece, the under, um, the base coat was milk paint, um, but it didn't react like milk paint normally does. I had a few more cells pop up, but nothing compared to what it should have been. Um, and that's just because I had too much paint on the surface of that and, um, it just didn't let them come up. But, um, it's still really, really cool. I, I really like this piece a lot I'm, I'm very happy with it and um yeah so that's saying a lot because it was a ring pour and i have voiced my dislike for ring pours but um this is a great piece um so anyway yeah those are the two pieces that are dry now um so i'm gonna put them away and then get my stuff set up and we're gonna paint be right back hello welcome to my channel my name is nikki thank you for stopping by tonight i've got this 14 by 14 canvas i'm going to be working on and i'm going to go over my color palette with you guys the first color i have is this liquitex basics in thalo green and then i've got the artist loft in light violet another artist loft color is this in parchment I have the Craftsmart, uh, the Premium Ultra Bright Metallic in the color Amethyst. I, I'm going to be using this Folk Art Milk Paint. This is in the color Tavern Ale. And um, I know that this line is being discontinued, but right now a lot of the stores that carry it have it on clearance. So um, for those who might be purchasing it, I just thought this might, you know, they might find some inspiration from this so that's why I decided to go ahead and use it now some people don't mix their um, milk paint with other paints I do just because this is really really thin consistency and um, I like to make this the milk paint thicker than my other paints um, so to do that I've taken this color from deco art this is the Americana decor outdoor living it's exterior interior paint. I've got a whole bunch of these colors. This is in the color Harvest. Um, there wasn't much paint left in this container. So I just put the milk paint in it with a little bit of pour and medium. Shook it up. Um, so that's what's in this. Um, but you could use um, what's an alternative color you guys could use. Because I'm not sure how available that is. Um, let's see. Here's, there's yellow ecru, and then there's yellow ecru deep. I think yellow ecru deep would probably be closest to what's in this jar. But I think this would match this milk paint better. The yellow ecru, just the plain yellow ecru. So if you don't have anything like this, um, these colors will work for you. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Alright. So. I'm going to put this down as a base. But I'm not going to include it in the cup. For the pour. And we're going to spread this out. I want this to cover the canvas pretty well. The last milk paint pour I did, I showed the dried result um, in the beginning of this and it didn't react like it should. And I feel like it was a combination of having too much paint on the canvas. And also I did not thin my top paints well enough. Um, so for myself, um, I prefer to have the milk paint 
a little thicker and the colors that I put in the cup thinner and it's worked for me um, that it the milk paint will create these little pearly cell kind of things um, and um, yeah and sometimes it's not so easy to get just the right kind of consistency it's, it can be a little bit tricky um, the Rustoleum milk paint in the large container it is thicker than the folk art milk paint um, so in all actuality you probably wouldn't need to um, mix that milk paint with um, another paint to make it thicker you could always because um, it is they have they call it classic white um, you could always use that and then tint it whatever color you want with an acrylic paint um, and you wouldn't I mean you wouldn't have to buy individual colors which I think once the folk art um, brand is out of stock I don't know that Rust-Oleum makes a, a really um, vast array of colors in milk paint I found mine at Home Depot and they only had the one color um, there's probably more available online but blame it on my feeling of instant like I want instant gratification I guess so if I spend the money I want the product right then I hate shopping online um, but sometimes you can't get out of it you know you there's some things you can only get online And if you hear me sniffling, it's, I'm not sick. I've, they, um, they varnished the floors at work and put down this wax coating thing on the floors after, over the weekend. And holy moly, it stunk the whole office up and my allergies, I'm, I, they're so sensitive. It's really I have sniffled all day because of it. I was about tempted to go home sick, but that would, that's just silly because I wasn't sick sick. I just, that smell. Whew. All right. We're going to, I was going to start by putting the, um, these paints are really, really thin. So, do keep that in mind. I'm trying to think how I can layer this without making mud. I don't think it's going to matter too much because of how thin they are. Let's just use this parchment color to layer in between. The thing with um, working with milk paint, when it starts to create those cells, you don't want to be stretching it a whole bunch after that they start to form because they'll get distorted. And... Um, they'll start looking wobbly and they won't hold that really pretty um, round shape I want some more of this green because I like it <laughs> I'm not going to put the rest of that in there it's, enough. it's probably too much but these paints are super thin I know they're going to run off it's not going to be like the last one. All right. 
So before I pour that on, I'm going to hit this with the torch just one time to pop the air bubbles. And then hopefully I won't have to use the torch again because milk paint does not um, like being torched very much. So, And I mixed up a new batch of um, pour medium and I forgot my strainer thing on the stink and flow trough. I just forget it. Okay. I want to make sure my canvas is well covered because it does make a difference. And I can see some canvas here. So let's put some of that on there. You're probably thinking, Nikki, you goober, you just spent all that time smoothing it out. But on the edges, it when you use that thing, it kind of pulls off the paint. So I'm going to use my glove. Just pat. Pat, pat, pat. There. That's a really good thick coat. It's so weird that the cicadas, they'll be humming, 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 and then all of a sudden they just stop. And then in a few minutes, they'll start back again. It's the weirdest thing because they're all, I know there's like, you know, hundreds of them singing, and then they all stop at the same time. Like, what distracted them? They're all quiet now. <laughs> That's the weirdest little thing. Okay. So, I'm going to make a spout. And I'm going to do a ring pour. Now they're starting back again. I can hear them. They start off like really, really low. And then they start getting louder and louder. I don't know. Does, does every place have cicadas? I guess I just assume everybody has them. Which I should not do. I'm going to try to preserve the shape of the ring by going, instead of just going to corner to corner. To like trying to let's try to make it go circle circle. Well, I say I was gonna try, but I didn't work. Oh gosh, how could I forgot the little strainer thing? My poor medium's been doing so good because I was like so particular. I'm sorry if my head is in the way. Um. I was so particular when I mixed up my last batch of um, Pora Medium. And I haven't had any flow trial boogies in weeks. Then I mixed up that new batch and I forgot the, the stockings to go over. And now look at me. I'm going to have to put them over the thing. And pour it into another container. And hopefully that will help. I'm so aggravated with myself for that. Okay. Let's go back. Oh, this is really pretty, y'all. The yellow, if the yellow starts popping through like I want it to. Maybe I need just a little bit more to come off. And you guys can see some magic start to happen. 
the first time I got this reaction from Milk Paint, I about lost my mind because I didn't know it was going to do that. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I can see them start to pop up in the upper corner. I did not preserve my rings, but um, that's okay. It's, it's okay. So generally speaking, whatever corner you pour the paint off the last the last time, that area tends to have less of the little pearly cells because like more paint collects there, I guess. Um I have poured off a lot of this paint. Um because if you leave it on, the little pearly cells won't come up. I'm trying to pull it back to the center. So like, the weight of what paint's left on there will be toward the center. I know the milk paint's not crazy about heat, but I think if I put just a little bit on it, that the little pearly cells will come up more. Mm -hmm. I forgot to fill my torch up. It used to scare me to death when I first got this thing to do that. I hope I'm not making a mistake. The thing is, you can't tell if you've made a mistake until after it dries. I'm just trying to stay a good distance away from the canvas and keep moving so that one area doesn't get too hot. I can see a nice cluster starting here and here in this corner and some here. I don't expect too many to pop up in this area because that is the last place I poured paint off of. Um, just as a side note, if any of you guys are trying to intentionally create lacing, like this, the white in here has created lacing. That is achieved by thinning your paint, like thin. Um, and water and paint is the best way to create um, that sort of lacing effect. And so if any of you guys have accidentally, because the first time I did it was an accident. And I'm like, how do I do this again? I couldn't figure it out. And I finally found somebody on YouTube that, um, that showed 
how to intentionally create lacing and they just they just mix water and paint and got it super thin and the other paints that they put with it had a, a thicker consistency not extremely thicker but just enough to tell a difference and um that's how the lacing was created because i think of all the paints that i put in there the um parchment one got the thinnest because i was mixing it in the container and i couldn't really tell the consistency um so it did get you know a little bit thinner than the other ones and um that's why you're seeing as much lacing going on in this area with it and so the way this milk paint goes is generally i set it to the side for about 15 minutes clean up and everything um and those little pearly cells will begin to develop and they continue to develop probably over about a 24 hour span um and um yeah so that's what i'm going to do i'm gonna um set this to the side and clean up a bit and um we'll come back in a little while and see what's happened okay okay we are back it's been I don't know how long I was very naughty and painted another picture and didn't put gloves on. Um, but I'm just going to show you some close-ups. More cells did develop. Um, they're slow forming, but they're coming through. Um, and they're pretty evenly spread out, actually. So, anyway, this is um, how it looks right now when it's wet. Um... I'll try to remember to show you guys the dried results, but, um, yeah, it's, it's doing what, um, my milk pours normally do as far as, like, cell creation and stuff, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I like the color palette, and, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this, and let's see if I can, I don't know how well the lighting is, but that's a sneak peek of what I poured. I didn't do a video of it. Um, but, um, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye!